This is the second revision session that I will be doing and in this session we'll be covering elements and formulas and then we'll be going on to cover acids and bases. So firstly we'll be looking at compounds and what elements are in the compounds. So we'll be looking at some pretty pretty well known compounds. So first we'll be looking at water, also known as H2O, then looking at carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, then CH4, sodium chloride, NaCl2, Cl, um, sulfuric acid and sodium carbon. We can use the periodic table to help us tell which elements are present in the compounds. So for example, in the first compound, which is H2O, we can see there is two hydrogens and one oxygen. For carbon dioxide, we can use the periodic table to see there is one carbon, and because there's no number by it, we know there's one, and there are two oxygens denoted by the number two by the oxygen. For methane, CH4, we can see there is also one carbon and there are four hydrogens because there is a little four after the hydrogen, meaning there are four hydrogens. For sodium chloride, NaCl, we can use the periodic table to identify their names. So we have sodium first and then we also have chlorine. We carry on the same method to identify H2SO4. Now sodium carbonate contains three different elements and the first one is sodium which we can tell from the periodic table, the second is carbon, we have one of each of these and then the final is oxygen which we have three of because there is a small number after the oxygen. Okay so now we will be moving on to definitions. Now the first definition that you need to know is an element and an element is made up of just one type of atom only so in the diagram you can see that there's only one atom just one so second definition is a compound now a compound is two or more different types of atom which are bonded together which means you'll have two atoms two or more atoms joined together by a bond so you can see from the diagram that there are three elements joined together. Two small ones are the same and one large one is different. And this is what a compound is, different atom atoms bonded together. Now our third definition is a molecule and this is two or more atoms bonded together and these atoms can either be the same or different. So the diagram on the left shows a molecule of two of the same atoms bonded together and the diagram on the left is also a molecule but this shows two different atoms bonded together. Our last definition is a mixture and this is made up of several substances not bonded together. So these substances can be a molecule, a compound or an element. So a mixture is just a mixture of all these th three substances mixed together. Now we will go on to look at acids and bases. Now, an acid by definition is something which has a pH less than 7 and a base is something that has a pH greater than 7. So, what we look at is a pH scale and you can see acids have low pHs, so they have 1 up to 6. 7 is a neutral compound, um, so this would be water, water is neutral, and then a s bases go from 7 upwards so bases have a pH greater than 7 and this is how we can distinguish between acids and bases. There are different types of acids and bases and we can use the universal indicator to help us distinguish between these strong acids and weak acids and strong bases and weak bases. So a strong acid would be the colour red and its pH would be about 1 to 2. Examples of this are hydrochloric acid which is in the stomach. A weak acid would be the colour yellow and this would have a pH of around 4 to 5 um, and this is sort of lemon juice or vinegar. Um, a neutral solution, water, would be green in the universal indicator and um, it would have a pH of 7. A weak base would be the colour blue, uh, this would be around 8 to 10 and a strong base would be the colour purple and this would have a pH of around 12 to 14. There are tests that we can do to test for whether a solution is 
acidic or basic. These tests involve using litmus paper. Litmus paper can either be blue, which we use to test for acids, or red, which we use to test for bases. So if it's blue litmus paper, you put your solution on it, and if the solution is acidic, the blue litmus paper will turn red. Then red litmus paper we can use to test for bases. So if you put your solution onto the red litmus paper and it turns blue, it means that your solution is acidic. However, if you are using red litmus paper to test for acids, there would be no change, but it would change, as I said, with a basic solution, the red colour would turn to blue. So what are bases? Well, bases, as we've said, have a pH that is greater than 7, and they will react with an acid to neutralise them. Alkalis are a type of base, and these are a type that will dissolve in water. So a base that dissolves in water is an alkali. A base that doesn't dissolve in water is just a base. <clears throat> so we're going to go on to some examples of these. So copper oxide is a base because it has a pH greater than 7. However, copper oxide does not dissolve in water, which means it's not an alkali. Another example is sodium hydroxide. Now this is a base because it has a pH greater than 7. It also neutralises acid and it also dissolves in water which means it's also an alkali. So you'll need to be able to identify what a base is. So remember how in the first session we talked about the periodic table can be split into two parts, metals and non-metals. Usually a base will be made of two parts, for example, copper oxide. The first part will be the metal, and you can identify if it's a metal by using the periodic table. And if you can see the element is present in the metals, you can assume that it's a base. So in these two examples, we can see that copper is present in the periodic table. So copper is the metal, and this means copper oxide is a base. Likewise, for sodium hydroxide, we can see sodium is in the metals, and this means that sodium hydroxide is also a base. So we also need to remember that an acid is something with a pH less than 7. Now we'll go on to look at neutralisation now. Now neutralisation is the reaction of an acid with a low pH plus a base with a high pH to form a neutral substance. So this would have a pH of 7. Base reaction, acid plus alkali, forms a salt and water. So you will need to know how to name salts. Now naming salts is a little difficult, so I'll try to explain it easily. So what it is, is you react an acid and base together. Now you use the salt that you form, in this example is sodium chloride. The name comes half from the base that you use and half from the acid. The first part of the name, sodium, comes from the base, and this is the metal that is in the base. So as we discussed how you can identify a base from the metal, this metal is the first part of the name of the salt. The second part, chloride, comes from hydrochloric acid, and this is something you're going to have to remember. So different acids have different ways that their names can be said. So hydrochloric acid gives the name to the salt, chloride. As we see in the example, this gave sodium chloride. Sulfuric acid would give the salt the name metal sulfate. Nitric acid would give the salt the name metal nitrate. Now these are just things you're just going to have to remember. So now we are going to do an example of an acid alkali reaction. So the example is of hydrochloric acid plus potassium hydroxide. So Remember, we use the metal from the base. So the base is potassium hydroxide. So to name the salt, we will use potassium. So the first part of the salt will be potassium. The second part comes from the acid, which is hydrochloric acid. Now remember, the name that we get from hydrochloric acid, acid is chloride. So the name of this salt will be potassium chloride. Now also remember that in this reaction, we will also form water. So the products will be potassium chloride plus water. 
So there are different types of acid-base reactions that you'll need to learn. So another type would be acid metal oxide, and this also forms salt plus water. Now you name the salt in the same way. So in this example, we've got hydrochloric acid plus calcium oxide, and the salt is calcium chloride. Now another type of reaction is acid plus carbonate. Now this forms salt plus water and carbon dioxide. Remember this from acid plus carbonate has carbon in the first part so you will form carbon dioxide as your products. So in summary you need to remember four different types of reaction. So your first type will be acid plus metal forms salt plus hydrogen. Acid plus metal hydroxide forms salt plus water. Acid plus metal oxide also forms salt plus water. And acid plus metal carbonate forms salt plus water and CO2. In the reaction of acid plus metal, you form salt and hydrogen. And there is a test that we can do to find if this hydrogen is present. So what you do is light a match and put this latch into the test tube. Now if this match, if the flame goes off with a squeaky pop, we can tell that hydrogen is present. There is also a test for CO2, for carbon dioxide, which involves using lime water. So if the lime water, if it goes cloudy, then we can tell that CO2 is present. I hope this video has helped and good luck in your exam.